Brian Kobig are expected back in court today for the first time in the new year, and all eyes are on whether they leave with a new trial date set. It's time to prepare, time to be time to get ready, and time to get some answers. The prosecution has requested the trial be held this summer when schools are out of session. The parents of victim Kaylee Gonzalez told us if that doesn't happen, they're concerned it will be pushed to summer 2025. We know if they don't push for this summer, we're looking at a year over a year, and um, that's mind-boggling, it's sickening. All right. Koberger is charged with the murder of four University of Idaho students, Zana Kernodal, Ethan Chapin, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Gonzalez in November 2022. A judge entered a not guilty plea on his behalf, and he said through a former attorney he believes he'll be exonerated. Steve and Christy Gonzalez preparing to again come face to face with the suspect in court today. How does it feel to see Brian Koberger in that courtroom? It's hard to keep control of yourself, you know. It's not fun to see this person um, um, be able to sit in, with a nice, tidy haircut, nice, clean mm -hmm. shave, a suit. Before they get to the question of the trial date, several procedural hearings. Koberger's team asking the court to reconsider its previous decision to deny their motions to dismiss the grand jury indictment. The more that they can complicate it and the more that they can delay it, um, it is harder for the state, um, you know, to have to put their arms around all of this. Earlier this month, the judge ordered the prosecution to turn over to the defense some of the DNA records they say led them to Koberger. That's all under seal. We just want to know about the evidence. There's just a lot of unknowns. And, you know, how long do you have to wait before you, you can find out about your own child's? you know, life and, and what, what happened, happened and who did this and how do you hold them accountable. And as Christy Gonzalez pointed out, Brian Koberger has been allowed to wear a suit in his pre-trial appearances. A former county prosecutor in Idaho told us that is highly unusual. She says in every case she's tried in her 33 years, the defendant came to court in their jail clothing for pre-trial hearings. A court spokesperson told us back in June, Koberger's attorneys asked if he could wear his own clothes, and the judge agreed. Savannah. All right, Liz, thank you very much. I'm going to turn to our senior legal correspondent, Laura Jarrett. Good morning. So what do you expect? today, two separate hearings. Mm -hmm. um What's this all about? Yeah, so remember, this is a death penalty eligible case. There is an enormous amount of physical evidence and circumstantial evidence. So if I am Koberger's defense attorney, I am doing everything possible to delay, delay, delay. And that's what we've seen. So now today, he's trying to get a second bite at the apple on motions that he has already lost. This is in front of the same judge. I think it's highly unlikely that the judge is going to actually reverse himself or say, actually, he can leapfrog over me and go straight to the Court of Appeals. I think that's highly unlikely. But all the time that this is going on, he's not facing the death penalty. Mm. And so he, that's a strategic win for him. So this crime happened 14 months ago. Yeah. Typically, when would a trial date be set? It feels like things are dragging. So what's unusual about this is not that there's been a delay or 14 months. It's a murder case. That makes sense. It's that there hasn't even been a date that gets mm -hmm. delayed and delayed. We see that all the time. It's the fact that there hasn't even been a, even a schedule. And I think mm -hmm. today, I know I'm a broken record on this, but we have, I might actually finally see one since the prosecution is asking for a um, summer trial date because they want the school not to be in session. Mm -hmm. And I think today we might actually see a trial date set. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, let's talk about what Liz just alluded to, the fact that, you know, contrary to what is customary in that court, yeah. he's allowed to wear a suit and tie. I've seen it both ways, and I think it depends on the jurisdiction. It certainly is up to the judge. You can understand the defense wants it because it humanizes him, makes mm -hmm. him not look like a suspect. Mm -hmm. But they're not in front of a jury yet, guys, right? This is mm -hmm. only in the court of public opinion. It could be tainting the jury pool, but it's not actually tainting the jury yet. Mm -hmm. So usually in, at a jury trial, a defendant yeah. wears civilian clothes, yeah. but at these pretrial hearings, they're you're used to seeing the, them yeah. in the orange yeah. jumpsuit, yeah. but the judge has let him wear a suit for this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Laura, thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.